So, those of you that know will know that this is a Schluter. The whole reason I'm here today is because there's this one, which is, believe it or not, a straight eight. It's an eight cylinder. And obviously it needs a bit of work. But the model down is a six cylinder. And well, let's go and have a look. So I think there's only four Schluters here in the UK that we know of, two of them are here. A seat here, very nice. You're gonna just close the sliding door. Of the day, it's not bad. No. Oh, we've got the back window open as well, haven't we? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Got 40 years of deterioration of seals and stuff, so that's probably quieter when it was new. But the luxury of opening the front window on a 6 foot 4 LSA making it really, really, really noisy. Yeah. I think what people have got to get in context is this is what year? 1981. Yeah. For the day, very nice. I mean, a huge tractor in 81. Like 160 horsepower. When I was on a managing a farm in 2007, we were only buying 160 horsepower tractors as well. Yeah, big tractor. Big tractor. Yeah, about 81. You were like 80, 90 horse was, was a decent, fair, average tractor. By the mid to late 80s, 110 horse. You know, so these were massive in the day. I mean, a lot, especially an eight cylinder at 200 horsepower would have been a hell of a thing. That is a big one. Anything crucial we should know, Chris? It's red. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> so, 
so there we go that i don't think i've i mean right so just to set the scene schluter probably in with e a lot 7800 tv it was all say again e7800 tv right so like a lot of you probably maybe some of you aware of the brand sin pictures but never really seen one in real life well welcome to my world that's the situation i was as for model which is a again schluter e 7800 tv all those right all of them i wouldn't have known what it is but i just know it's a schluter i know that they did a six cylinder one they did a four cylinder one there was a three as well was there really yeah, there was a three, yeah. and then there was the eight and as we know you've uh, there the, is an eight somewhere nearby yeah with that in mind I have to say, for a tractor that I have never driven before until today, everyone always asks me, what's, what's your, what's your favourite tractor? And, you know, the 8210, Fence, 615. We've, we've done all that. I've never had a tractor that I've never driven, driven at once, and that's gone into my top three. Uh, certainly nice, and that's very different. Sliding doors are different. But essentially, it's like a red and goldy coloured 615, isn't it, really? Like everything's I mean, it much is. the same, but it's not. But this is the <laughs> thing. This is what, what, you know, so, all right. As you know, the power delivery, as I was trying to portray as I was driving it, and I don't know if I did or not. In fact, no, I didn't. Because you don't know, because you haven't driven it. And until you drive it, you will not believe just how much that effort noise, yeah, like... power delivery there is. It's amazing but that said so yeah sounds and pulls like a 615 lsa fent but here's the difference i think this is where schluter just went above and beyond would you say they sat down with the rather than trying to bring out the next best looking thing or something that had something different to write they just said to you what why don't we give them what they need and want i think they did that to a degree um but you'll see when you get when you get a, a Schluter book and look at all the models, they made loads of like ones and twos of things. So they were constantly trying to innovate and tweak and, and do something slightly different. Although the tractors aesthetically didn't change. So they were always just trying to perfect, I guess. Or it's a bit isn't, of a job to get in that mindset of what they were trying to do. Isn't that though, without being, you know, stereotypical, but isn't that stereotypical of German engineering? Yeah, that so. the Germans always tried and I'm obviously referring back to the days of, of World War II and the Panzers and stuff like that. The problem with a lot of German engineering, is it was just too good. Mm. As in, and obviously with wartime restrictions, they never had the resources to finish everything right. So, but when they did do something, um, I mean, they, they, they reckoned that they found at the end of World War II, they found designs and a part built prototype in one of the tank factories uh, of a tank and the the allies the us and, and and great britain and that caught up with that technology in about the 1960s you know they were that far advanced and it's the same thing with the tractors i think yeah but the linkage on this you've felt it yourself like the linkage is really responsive it doesn't jerk it doesn't judder it goes where you put it like and it really behaves doesn't it just it's, just it's nice. almost like a um a modern you know a modern control where you just like literally flick a switch and it does it's smooth and whatever or you have a nice round dot and it just let it it's like that in a lever where everything else with a lever it either you can feel it kicking and juddering as you're bringing it <laughs> or there's nothing 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 us up and then it's down and then it's that well, where you put the lever is where the implement goes it's that simple starting with, with the with the engine it's their own engine schluter mm -hmm. engine isn't it? engine they built it Bosch pump, I reckon. Gotta yeah. be a Bosch pump. Bosch yeah. yeah. Sounds just like a Swiss watch. And I mean just so it smooth. Just starts, it just starts tickles along. And it goes. It's just again that precision, that German precision. And then you say the turbo clutch. And then the controls and even the gear the, the gearbox in it is um so you've got six speeds there and you've got how many ranges two ranges two ranges and reverse, obviously. And, reverse and six speeds mm. and once you know the box 
you push it into where it should be click it's in it's not a is it does it feel a bit bendy notchy yeah, is it no it's just clunk it's in that's it um room in the cab is just colossal i was saying in the back of the seat on on a seat a passenger seat dedicated seat in the back of the cab the helga seat the helga seat i mean that's very eastern <laughs> european that isn't it that's sort of thing but just legs nicely out across the cab i'm sat it's comfortable you're letting up very very nice the main seat is very comfortable isn't it like again they would have probably spent hundreds of hours yeah, with people sat not, there probably not what i would be my perfect steering position but it's nice like i don't yeah I but don't, you are I a funny shape i'm not I'm that. <laughs> not driving it thinking oh it's not really it's, it's not, not like, a saucepan oh i can't get you know very very nice again as far as vision goes everybody on the back and so we've done this we've we've increased the vision by three percent by moving the pillar here no it's a nice big cab and and you can see and guess what where you need to see they don't have a pillar there's a piece of glass even yeah, over the no, back end there's no exhaust on the bonnet is there no air intake on the bonnet everything's in Remember line that? no exhaust on the back back and that is actually just kicked out so that's kicked out so that thing. clears it the exhaust is that side you can look straight along a nice low bonnet as we were saying these days, there's all things and a low, up. Low level diesel filler, so you yes. don't have to climb up. Yeah, no, nothing dangerous, not that clutch. Just there you, there's your fuel. Um, like I say, the back, behind the seat, behind the seat where you want to see your implement, because you're set far forward, really, in the cab, because the cab's so big, you know, it's a long way to the back. So normally that's like, oh, I can't see. Now there's your big open glass area. You can watch everything down at the rear end. They're big areas. You can undo them, you can access stuff. Again, just thought out, hey, why are we putting this in here? It has to be for a reason. So this is 160, six under. The eight. Would have been 150 in Germany, but all the ones that came to the UK all had a 10 horsepower boost. So what would have been 150? So this would be sold as a 1500 in ah, Germany. Ah, right. But we have the export model, so what was a 1500 there is the E7800 here. And like the, the eight cylinder Schluter, that would have been, uh, uh, a, two th an e uh, no, a 2000 TVL in Germany, but we had them as an E9500. So, so, and that would have been how many horsepower in Germany? 185. And here? 200. So, 200 horsepower. Again, 1981? Uh, that's an eight. Built in, eight, built in 80. Sold built here in 81. 81. Mm. Huge um, tractor back then, really. Massive. Mm. Colossal tractor. Yeah, really big. We you didn't know. see 200 horsepower tractors on a rigid chassis back then. So, we're, we're our Schluter. We're, why are they not on the market now? And that's one of those things that they, they went out of business. When was that? It was in the late 80s. The late uh, 80s, was they, it? They sold to LTS. Okay. Um, and then it all sort of fell out of bed with it. Yeah. It probably didn't move with the times because like, they kept this cab right till the end. And other manufacturers were doing slightly nicer, more comfortable things. I cannot convey, knowing that it's 41 years old, just how incredible this this thing is it is i always thought that We've done no prep have we we've just dragged it out of the shed this morning tuttled over here he literally it did it, it was just like we, we were like we, we don't you're not going to just work that's nah, right she'll go i always thought that of the day the 1980s that the rolls royce of tractors was the fen so if i've ever told anybody that i want to just make this point now <laughs> No, no, no. Retract that i'm going to retract that statement and the rolls royce of the day was schluter not by, you know, but just, got to have a bit more. No, in fact, I'll get, the Fent was the Rolls Royce of the day. This is the Bentley. <laughs> this is the one with the slightly better carpets and nicer patches. You know Probably what I mean? more reliable than the Fent yeah. and easier to work on. Yeah. Right, well, there we go. Um, we will see more of this, obviously, and we will see this eight cylinder. But like I've always told you, that's all very well watching these videos and appreciate it, but it takes time. And more than that, it's got to finish the D8 first. It, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, only yeah. been two years. So that's Tunmore's cat D8, and she's been a bit poorly. What you, uh, what you had done to turn it? Uh, all new liners, new pistons. It, basically, the head was leaking because it was um, because they got those counter. Some pores, and they yeah. so it sits in a little recess. Uh, just, we're using 40 litres of coolant a day when we first got it. So, it's a bit of a bit, tension. It is a bit of a tension, yeah. It ran and drove and did everything fine. Just, um... 
so there we are but again you know we can come and film this stuff with your support you keep supporting us keep liking the videos and stuff like that keep commenting and and we'll see more stuff like this oh i do want to see this again though <laughs> I do drive a lot of stuff and I've driven a lot of stuff over the years but today genuinely and as I'm not joking it has to be one of the most enjoyable experiences a tractor goes to drive this I, I, I thought it'd be all right I thought it'd be good great nice German bit of engineer and six cylinder lovely no brilliant super duper super duper super duper <laughs> So, this is the this is the eight cylinder version. So this is what again? What model is this? This is the you see here, here. E ninety five hundred at two hundred e, horsepower. Two hundred horsepower E ninety five hundred TBL. And in Germany, it was one hundred and eighty five. One hundred eighty five horsepower two thousand TBL. Right, so yeah, eight cylinder. Straight eight. Now I. So is that manifold? Just. I just cannot wait for the day you actually do get this all put back together, all the bits that need doing. you've got to do, as we said, you can't just throw a battery on and go for it. Then why the hell aren't you up there helping them? Oh, man. I only ride them. I don't know what makes them work. Can... Do it right, and then hear a fire up for the first time. Straight eight. That'd be nice. It's very smooth. Yeah, yeah. Got a video of it the last time it ran coming off the lorry. Going yeah. to Walston. <laughs> Because of course the person that was famous for having these is the first you know, farmer in the UK. Yeah, um, Oliver Walston. You know, um, and a lot of you remember him. Uh, and his son David actually has been putting some videos out of the old uh, oh, the farm and diaries. And against the grain, wasn't it? Was it? That, yeah, that, was in the 90s. that man was light years ahead of his time. Funny enough, there again, well, he, he was ahead of his time, wasn't he? Fine. Oliver Walston was ahead of his time in everything like that. But. Um, all right, so stay tuned because we've got that one to be done and we'll see more of that and then this. If the Schluter had come up in the Mucker Rates to the Top 10 Tractors video, I'd had to put another shelf up for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going? Just hang on a minute. As most of you know, we're raffling off this Dexter for as little as £5 a ticket. Now, obviously, the more tickets you buy, the more chances you get. But because of all your generosity, I want to do something else. Now, I'm often getting asked, what tools do I use day to day? Well, this is one of the sets I do use. It's my Halfers Advanced set. And there it is. Now, obviously, I've had that set a few years and it's had a bit of use. But I'm going to put a brand new set, just like that, as a second prize on the Dexter raffle. All right? So uh, if you go on to the site, and I'll put the details of how you can get there in the description box below this video, that'll take you on to the raffle page where the Dexter is the first prize now, but it's not the only prize because the second prize and all his special prize will be a set like this. So you've got two chances of winning now, really. Uh, and obviously the more tickets you buy, the more chances you get. But as I said, uh, just blown away by how generous you lot have been, and so I want to give you a little bit more. So go over to the raffle page, my own raffle page I've got there. The link, is, as I said, is in the description box below this video. <laughs> oh, and if you want to know what this thing is, it's not a coffee percolator. Believe me, I, I tried it. It's, it's disgusting. But if you go over to the Fud Weasels channel, and again, I'll put a link to that in the description box below this video, he gives a demo of how this works and exactly what it is. Nuts. Now, those of you that remember us going and buying those uh, little GH94 plant trailers from Ritchie Brothers Auction, well, obviously the uh, bearings and the brakes, it's in uh, better days. What you talking about, Willis? Anyway, Kimberly's just put out a video where she shows how to completely rebuild all the brake stations and that and the shoes, replace them and also the bearings. Two-part brake shoes, I hear you say. 
self-assembly required. And the link to that video, you know where to find it. Well, there we go. That, that was a fun-filled, action-packed week, wasn't it? Thank you, yes. So there we are, muckers. Again, thank you for all your support. Oh, and as I said, the first 10 people that actually got the tickets for the Dexter raffle, just check below the video here because uh, your names are there. Contact me and uh, I'll send you, uh, to send you the top dog stickers. Anyway, muckers, until the next one. Do well.